Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, okay, so um, I've actually had a, a look online and uh, there are an awful lot of people building this battery and one's very, very similar. Basically, the way it's working is there's one company in China that makes these back battery boxes and a lot of other companies rebrand them, put their own badge on it. Um, and a lot of the other companies who are, have instructions don't use these separators. They only use a separator at the very front of the battery and the very back of the battery. Um, so uh, this company, EEL uh, Battery, um, they don't actually make this case, they're just, they just rebrand it. Um, so yeah, they, they're saying put these separators in, but obviously my battery doesn't fit with these separators. So uh, like I said, all the other manufacturers um, in the industry, they don't use these separators. They just put one at the front and one at the back, which is exactly uh, what I have done. So I'm not going to use those. <laughs> So uh, this morning, what I want to do is um, I want to start getting the battery um, all hooked up with the bus bars um, and we're going to start wiring up the front panel. So let's get to it. OK, so the next task is it says we need to install these uh, terminal blocks um, above the battery or rather the circuit boards above the battery. Um, so it's saying put the A board on the left. So. Let's just see, this, is, this one is marked with a B. And this one is marked with an A. So what these actually do is, all these wires which come out um, get connected up to the battery management system. Um, and then a multi-pin connector plugs into here, which then plugs into the BMS. Now, technically you don't actually need this board. You could wire, put you know, cables directly from, from the terminals directly into the BMS. Um, and that is the way that most people do it if they're building a battery 100% from scratch. But just having um, everything on a circuit board like this, and the, obviously there's some, you know, there's some temp temperature sensors as well. It just makes everything very neat um, and also very easy to install. So yeah, so uh, it, it makes everything look nice as well. Um, so these wires are for, um, uh, balancing uh, the battery from the BMS and also so the BMS can keep uh, an eye on the different voltages of the different cells in the pack and obviously there's obviously also here you can just see it there so that's a, a temperature sensor as well so that's pretty cool now I might also add in a separate um, a separate balancer, a separate device into this pack and I'll do that manually through wires just simply because the um, battery balancing unit, uh, the top balancing unit that's built into a lot of these BMSs isn't very good. Um, I'm sure this is something in time, you know, we're still very early in the, in the days of uh, battery building and, and especially DIY battery building. But a lot, a lot of the battery management systems, the BMSs on the market, uh, pretty much all of them, the balancing um, devices that are built into the um, BMSs are just not very good. Um, you're much better off buying a separate balancing unit for, and they're not very expensive, you know, anything from $50 to $100, buying a separate box and installing that in, in the box. Um, so that is something I think I probably will install um, in, in this box, um, but we'll see, see how we go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is install this. Uh, I need to be really careful now not to short, you know, I don't want this metal to touch the terminals. So I'm just gonna put this in, being very, very careful not to short anything out and push it down. And there are some screw holes there, I'm just lining that up. Okay, so that's good. And then we've got the B1 on the right hand side. It's a bit of a tight fit, but I just want to make sure I haven't got any of these underneath. This one seems to fit a lot better. There we go. Okay, so there we go. I think that's in. Just one thing actually. I think there was some EVA tape which was cut to exactly the size to go underneath here. So maybe there's meant to be EVA tape underneath these terminals. It doesn't actually say to put it in. Ah, inconsistencies in instructions. So we've got here some of this squishy EVA tape with ho holes pre-cut in it, which kind of looks like we could stick it to the underneath of um, these circuit board things. 
Uh, it's not in the instructions what to, what to use this tape for. So they've included this tape, but not put it in the instructions. Uh, they also have a YouTube video and it's not in the YouTube video either. Um, so let's have a look. Let's just take one of these off. Um, so maybe we should just stick this on anyway. It's not in the instructions, but um, I think I will do that. So why don't we, why don't we install that? Uh, I'm just going to put that here. It's weird that they forget to put it in the instructions, but there we go. Uh, it always amazes me that these companies, not just like you know for batteries, but for you know furniture, um, anything that comes in kit form, as we know, usually has terrible instructions. Why don't they just pay like a, someone who's got a good YouTube channel or a YouTuber to make a comprehensive, hang on, I've got to concentrate here. I don't want to get this wrong. Um, oh, here we go. Fantastic. Yeah, why don't they just pay a YouTuber to create an instructional video? Um, I wouldn't want to do it, but I'm sure there are a lot of YouTubers who would be up for that and it would create a much better video than some, you know, rubbish video that's been translated from Chinese or has, or some, you know, crappy kind of instructions, like the kind of things you get with Ikea furniture. Um, you know, why on earth don't they just get some proper videos made? It wouldn't cost very much money. You know, they could probably get it done for under, you know, thousand dollars or something, a couple of thousand dollars, it wouldn't cost very much. And that's, you know, a couple of thousand dollars isn't very much in the grand scheme of things when you're developing um, a, a physical product. Um, you know, so to design, the, for instance, to design this battery box, have all the, you know, the, the, the machinery and the tooling and everything all made to bring this particular product to market would have cost a huge amount of money. And I'm sure they could have paid you know, some YouTuber to create a video, training video showing how to put it together. Um, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> Who knows? Um, right, let's put uh, the tape on here. Uh, punch out all these holes here. There we go. Might as well use this if it's um, in the kit. No point in not using it. I guess it's just another layer of isolation because everything here is made out of very, very thick, high grade steel. I'm very impressed with the quality. It's not flimsy, this box at all. It's like a tank. Okay, so I guess what we're trying not to do is put bare metal um, on directly on top of the battery. Um, even though this is all isolated, it's just an extra layer of protection that we've got some foam, um, foam here. So I'm making sure we've got these sockets, these multi-pin sockets at this end, because this, this end is where the BMS will be, the battery management system. So I'm just laying that down. Okay. There we go. Just making sure I haven't trapped any of the cables underneath the circuit board. So incidentally, we've got these holes um, in all in this circuit board, and you probably notice that these battery cells they all have these like round discs in the middle, and these are venting ports. So if something catastrophic happened to the battery, um, this is where it's designed to fail. Um, it's a bit like a fuse, so it's designed to fail here. Um, this is where. Uh, so this is like a vent hole uh, where the gases could come out. So that's why there are holes in the circuit board as well. Okay, so let's uh, screw this in now. So one problem with this kit is I have no idea. So th these are the screws it's come with, but I don't know which screws to use to tighten up um, this. I mean, it, it, it says, you know, use, it just says, you know, what does it actually say? So in the instructions, it says, um, it doesn't even say which, which screws to use, but in some of the steps it will say, you know, use, you know, an M8 screw or whatever. Um, but the box the screws come in are not labeled at all. So it's very hard to know which screws to use for which. Um, so I really, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at these screws and I'm not really knowing 
which screws I should be using. I have no no clue, um, and I don't. So for for this, I'm just thinking. I I really. Oh gosh. So we need uh, eight eight screws. Um, so I'm looking at some screws here, eight screws. I don't know if I should use the black screws. Oh my gosh. I'm going to use these ones. These are quite long, but I'm going to use these anyway. That's the only thing. I wish they would have labeled a bit better. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure the holes on this side all line up. Is this magnetic? No, it's not. Ugh. Okay. There we go. Right, everything's lined up there. So I just hope I don't like halfway through this job run out of the right type of screws and then have to take everything apart and move everything around. Okay. I think the next battery I build, I will know exactly which screws to use. I need a different screwdriver. I don't even know. Oh, that's magnetic. There we go. So that's the screwdriver to use for this job. Not the old electric one. Do it the old fashioned way. Okay, so the next job is I need to install all of these uh, bus bars um, on the battery in the correct order. So they have provided a very small diagram there. So I'm just going to follow the diagram and uh, work my way through the batteries. So the first one goes on here. I think that just goes down here. So we're basically just connecting plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus. Um, making sure we've got these cables on the top. Very simple. Uh, and then we will have a one going across there. And then it's just plus and minus. This is where we start needing to be careful because when we connect this whole battery together, it's going to take it from being like a three volt battery to, you know, a 60 volt battery. And that's when, um, yeah, that's when you start getting, you know, a lot of voltage and it can start getting dangerous. Um, so you need to then be careful. Okay, so, uh, so that one goes there. One goes there, that one goes there, nice and easy. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay. Uh, plus, minus. Plus, minus. And we seem to be short of one bus bar. What's going on here? Uh, that is very frustrating. How could they send me one missing bus bar? Ah, uh, isn't that always the way? I think I've done this correctly. Let me just see. So there should be, yeah, I'm missing one bus bar. I'm just gonna go and have a look to see if I've got it anywhere. Okay, so yeah, the kit was actually short of one bus bar. Um, I thought it was kind of weird when I was putting the uh, batteries in parallel that I didn't have enough nuts and bolts. Um, so I need to contact the uh, company and get them to send me over another bus bar. I'll probably just do that when they send over the uh, next batch of um, uh, battery boxes. However, the actual batteries themselves come with extra, you know, just like with standard bus bars. These aren't flexible bus bars like the ones that come with the battery, um, so they're not as good. So what I will do is I will use um, one of these temporarily uh, until I get the replacement from the company. So I'm going to put that in now. Okay, so that's the last one there. Kind of annoying it doesn't match. Um, and then these are our main um, positive and negative of the battery. So the final thing we need to do obviously is we need to put the nuts on, but I'm just going to put on all the balance leads. I'm going to connect up all the balance leads. So there we go. It's very neat to this system. 
don't have loads of wires going everywhere, which is nice. Usually when you have homemade batteries, it's a complete rat's nest of uh, cabling. Obviously, if I put a balancer in here, I'm going to have to be really careful to make sure that it all looks nice and neat. Because I hate it when cabling is untidy. All right. That all looks good. And that one goes here. And then we've got this one goes here. This system is good because it ensures that you're not connecting the wrong cable to the wrong terminal because the wire is the kind of perfect length. Um, you can't you can't connect the wires to the wrong terminal, if that makes sense, because the wire wouldn't be long enough. Uh, so it's kind of almost a foolproof system. Okay, so the final thing we're going to do is just, uh, I'm going to hand tighten all of these uh, uh, nuts, and then we'll, we have to actually tighten up these nuts to an, an exact torque setting. Um, so I actually have a, have a, I bought a torque wrench. Um, and... So I'm just going to put these all on hand tightness. So when, um, let me just bring the camera back up here so you can see me. Hang on, there we go. So when um, anything electrical, so whether this is like home mains, electrics, uh, even like if you're wiring a, a plug, um, which I guess most people don't do these days. You know, like when I was at school, I remember in, in class, it actually in school when I was 10 years old, all of us in, 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 the, in the class, they taught us how to wire up a plug. Um, because back then in England, when you bought like a blender or a hoover or whatever, like a, an appliance, <laughs> it, for some reason back in the 70s and the 80s, um, devices didn't come with, uh, with plug sockets. You actually had to then go and buy a plug and wire it in yourself. Um, you know, we live in such a nanny state now that I think it's uh, people would think, oh, that's too dangerous to put a plug on myself. <laughs> but I remember learning that actually in school. It's crazy, actually, when I think about it. I think the average person now wouldn't actually even know how to wire a plug socket up, wouldn't know how to change a plug. Um, you know, I find it kind of amusing. I, I, I sold um, a device on eBay a couple of years ago. It was a Sonos uh, speaker. And the Sonos speakers come with a pre-wired mains cable. It's like a, what's called an IEC detachable mains cable. And when I moved to France, I cut the cable off because it had a UK three pin plug on it. I cut it off with a pair of snips and I put a French. I went and bought a French plug socket from um, the hardware store and I wired in a French plug. I don't like using adapters here in France if I'm using English equipment, so I always put the correct like French plug socket on things where you know wherever I can. Um, and anyway, so I did that, and then when I sold it, I actually sold it in the UK. So because I've got a, a UK eBay account because they don't really use eBay in France. Um, and uh, anyway, so I, I sold it, and I thought, oh, I better you know change the plug. So I actually had an old English. I didn't buy a new one, which was pretty bad. I, I just had an old three-pin plug. Put this on the um, on the cable, and it all worked fine. Someone bought this, this Sonos speaker, and I got a a complaint. The guy said, "Oh, it's it's like an old plug, and, and it's uh, you know it, it, it's uh, what, 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 why isn't the original one on there?" And he's asking all these questions, and I just said, "Oh, you know, um, well, if you don't like it, you can just go and buy another plug and change the plug over." And he said, "Oh, I can't I can't hire an electrician to put a plug on the socket." I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> anyway, uh, but anyway, what I was saying was, so it's really important whenever doing anything like this, um, or even wiring up a, a domestic plug, uh, you know, mains electricity, you know, back building, building batteries, oh, we don't want that to fall in there, building batteries, it's really important that um, all the connections are tightened tight enough. If you have a loose connection in an electrical system, um, it causes heat because the you, you get like arcing, you know. So the electricity is trying to make a connection, um, and you can you you, you worst you know the, the the best case scenario I guess is that you just lose a lot of energy due to heat, so it becomes really inefficient. So if these terminals weren't tightened down correctly, 
um, the battery would be really inefficient and the whole thing would heat up and we would lose a lot of the electricity to heat. Um, so we would lose a lot of capacity um, of the battery. Uh, so that's the best scenario. The worst scenario is some things heat up to such an extent, and this can happen with mains electricity, um, if your connections aren't tight enough, that it heats up to such an extent that it causes a fire. Um, and that can, can and does happen. It's the most common cause of fire in electrical installations in houses where people, even professional electricians, I've seen it before, I've gone into f fuse boxes where, you know, I've, I've lived in houses and sort of, you know, put something new into the fuse box when I've moved in and it's like, oh my gosh, this is loose. Things are loose. Uh, we had it here in France. So the fuse box here when we moved in, uh, I was putting something in there and I noticed that something was like not very tight and that's just so dangerous. Um, so whenever I do these types of things, I will tighten them and then I go over it a second time like with a different screwdriver just to make sure everything 100% is tight because it can be really dangerous. So the, um, for, for battery installations, for this, they actually say use a torque wrench, which I think is really sensible. I've never seen that before. Um, I think it's quite common with battery stuff that they will say tighten up to this exact um, torque setting. Um, which is great because it, what it means is you don't over tighten things because obviously if you over tighten it you know you can like damage um, damage the thread uh, in a fuse box if you over tighten something you'd probably just snap something off and break it and then you could you know <laughs> have an expensive bill um, so yeah that's really great so what it's actually saying here is we need to um, put the bolts on which we've just done, and connect up all the balance leads, which we've just done. Um, and then it's quite funny, it says here, um, the, you then need to fasten the, the nuts with 6.4 Newton meters, yeah, got this, so N, NM, they put in brackets, or, or 7, point, um, 7 Newton meters. So I don't know what, if it's 6.4 or 7. I'm gonna do 6.4 because what I'm worried about is if I tighten these too, too much, uh, it might strip the thread um, and you can't, I don't see how you could, you know, I, I have no idea what I'd do if I stripped a thread here. Um, I can't remove these nuts. Some of the these older cells they used to sell, you could actually remove, um, remove the bolt um, and put a new bolt in. So if you stripped a thread, it wasn't such a big deal because you could change it. These bolts seem to be welded in. So if we stripped one of these threads, no idea what's going to happen. Uh, kind of like game over. Um, <laughs> I guess I could maybe cut a new thread into it, but that's really dodgy on a battery. I, yeah, so um, I'm going to go with the lower setting, 6.4 Newton meters. Now, I've never used a torque wrench in my life before. Um, I've seen YouTube videos where they've been using like digital torque wrenches. And so I went and bought a digital torque wrench. Uh, like I said, I've never used it before. So uh, I'm going to go and uh, get it and um, let's uh, see how it works. So let me just go and grab it. Okay, so run into a really small problem or quite a large problem actually is my torque wrench will not fit um, the socket set that I have. And of course these things always happen on Sunday here in France. So in France, nothing is open on Sunday um, and a lot of things aren't even open on Monday. Uh, because and it's August so a lot of the stores are actually closed in August as well because they're on holiday. Oh my gosh. Um, so let me show you what the problem is. Okay so this is the torque wrench I um, ordered. It was a kind of you know recommended to me from another YouTube channel. Um, I'm sure it's a very good torque wrench but as you can see the connections here are huge massive and these are my sockets it's not going to fit um, this is my wrench it doesn't fit uh, I've even got a larger one here and that doesn't fit it's an unusually large um, opening here and when I was in the UK I realized this a long time ago so um, when I was in the UK, um, it's kind of difficult going to shops and explaining what you need. And I thought, well, I can probably get like an adapter, like a step down. And 
I looked on Amazon, but I had no idea what to even order or what to even type in. I didn't even know what size this was. This thing came with no instructions, so I don't even know what size this is, what the terminology is. So I thought, well, I'll just have to go to a shop and ask. So I went to three different stores in the UK, and this is like some really weird size. It's, it's a very, very large size. This is for like <laughs> torque wrenching, I don't know, like wheels from trucks or something. Um, it's huge. Um, so nowhere, ha I had to go to some specialist auto shop. And anyway, after about an hour of them looking around, they did find this step down, um, which does fit. It does fit on, on here. Um, and then this step down, which fits in here. So let me just show you. So that's with these connected now. So I do have a, a smaller socket there and a smaller one there. But even with these, um, I can't, you know, like I can actually connect up the a wrench to this side, so that's okay. But this is still quite large for the sockets that I have. Um, this is the size I need to tighten up the bolts on the battery, but that still doesn't fit. And I actually did buy a separate socket set, which is here, um, with all these different things, but these none of these fit. Um, only these ones fit out of the whole set, and they're the wrong size. So, th so that will actually fit over here, but obviously this is for tightening up a much larger bolt. Um, so I can't proceed because I don't have the right torque wrench. So, oh, I'm stuck. I'm really annoyed. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of annoying that this thing doesn't come with any instructions. I've, I've turned it on and it, it is set to Newton meters. So that is good. Um, but when, when it comes on, let me just set it. I don't know if you can see, see that but it's coming up as 600 Newton meters. Now, I don't know if that means six Newton meters. I can't imagine it is 600 Newton meters, but maybe this is like a torque wrench for tightening up, you know, bolts on, on truck wheels. Uh, and maybe they go to 600 <laughs> Newton meters. I, I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem to go below 600. Uh, so yeah, I'm total loss. I don't know about torque wrenches, never bought one before, never used one. Um, yeah, I need to do a bit more research. So these are the kind of problems that you come across when you're doing something like this, particularly if you start using tools and things that you've never used before. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand tighten these bolts with the, with my spanner, just very, very slightly, just so I don't have any stupid loose connections in the box, put the lid on, and then I'm going to go to Amazon and see if I can find another torque wrench. Uh, which has, I'd like to have a digital one, but one which has the smaller connectors on the end. Um, and failing that, I will go to, there is like a, a car auto shop in uh, our local town here. Uh, but I don't know if they're going to be open because it is August. So like I said, in France, a lot of things close in August. Um, they'll probably be going to be closed on Monday. So <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Um, in France, like, you know, things are always closed on Sunday. They're quite often closed on Monday. They're quite often closed on Wednesday, and sometimes they're closed on Friday. Um, and like professional shops, you know, where professionals go to, like builders, merchants, and things like that, they're quite often closed on Saturday. It's crazy. And then uh, August, so a lot of things are closed in August as well. So really tricky um, buying things. Um, yeah, <laughs> just my little moan about living in France. Okay, so I'm gonna end the video here, and uh, in the next video, hopefully I would have found an appropriate torque wrench. Okay, so that's hilarious. I just realized, just read the side of this torque wrench. Look, it says the range is 200 to, what is that? 200 to 1,000 Newton meters. So yeah, this, this torque wrench is, is completely the wrong tool um, I've ordered. Uh, completely my fault. Uh, this is a torque wrench for tightening up like you know, wheel nuts on cars and trucks and things. So uh, back to the drawing board and I need to go and get a new torque wrench.